Hi everyone, welcome back to our truck camper renovation series. In this episode, we will be upgrading our electrical system inside the truck camper. This will be part one of a three part electrical series. In this episode, we upgrade the 12 volt and 120 volt electrical wiring inside the camper. In part two, we add lithium batteries and an inverter. And in part three, we add a thousand watts of solar on the roof and all the related wiring. So be sure to keep an eye out for those episodes also. The details of this episode will start with the shore power connection. The big 30 amp cord that everybody has to deal with and jam in that little opening, we don't really need it. We don't need a big power feed like that. So we're going to get rid of that so we can just plug in with a regular extension cord. We're not powering any big power items like an air conditioner or anything like that. So um, 15 amps is plenty and then we can eliminate that big cord and we don't have to deal with that. These older campers originally don't come with an AC inverter. So you don't have the two sources of power to deal with. So there is no transfer switch. Once you have the two sources, you need to be able to switch between each source so you never get the two connecting together. So we need to add a transfer switch in here because we're going to have inverter power. So then when we plug in shore power, it can switch to shore power and not connect the two together. We'll be removing our AC-DC converter. From the factory, they put it in AC-DC converter, so when you plug into shore power, that charges your batteries and provides some power to your 12 volt appliances and lights and so on. We don't really need that anymore. Um, you know, we could use it to charge our battery. Lithium is charged at a little higher voltage, so you can't really get 100% charge into them. They'll work. It'll work just fine, really. You won't, you'll get maybe 90% charge. But ours isn't functioning properly anyway, so we're going to take it out. It's not necessary. We're going we're gonna to put in a separate lithium charger in our inverter battery install episode. So we're going to facilitate what we need to do to wire that in, in this interior wiring episode. We're going to take out the AC-DC converter that they put in from the factory. We need to rewire our 12 volt panel a little bit. So that can all be fed from our battery. And um, yeah, then we're just gonna run the circuits we need to power up our, our system through that transfer switch, provide a circuit for the inverter to feed that panel and a circuit for our battery charger to be charged when we're plugged into shore power. And then on the 12 volt side, we're gonna make sure we have good feed for the 12 volt fridge we're putting in and we're going to change out some of these old janky lights that, you know, use incandescent bulbs. Some of ours had LED bulb upgrades, but really they were even dimmer than the incandescent ones. So um, lighting is pretty brutal in these old RVs. So we're going to get some new bright LED lights in. And uh, then we're going to uh, throw in a couple uh, charging circuits. So we'll have some USB ports here and there so we can charge our batteries for GoPros and phones and all that stuff. So follow along and see what we're gonna do in this electrical episode. I did notice the other day I plugged in the electrical system and the converter wasn't really making very much power. Um, I put on a lower charge, like I'd only run it with a fully charged battery before and I put on a lower charge battery and the output was crap. And it's the original converter. I was going to use it, even though I have lithium batteries, it would still charge the batteries up to probably 90%, but uh, looks like I'm not using it. So I, it's a 25 amp, the factory one. So I bought a uh, 40 amp lithium charger which um, will take this converter out and replace it with that charger, whether it'll fit in this spot or I have to put it somewhere else, I don't know, but I'm gonna take it out for now. And uh, yeah, so right now I'm just kind of tracing wires, trying to figure out, um, make sure we have good power for the fridge and whether I have to drag new wires through or not, and just try and get a good understanding of the wiring in this RV. Um, the the red and big red and black power wires that run back to the uh, battery box. I can see them inside this cabinet where the mess of wires comes back. 
And I see scotch locks on red and black or white and black wires, which there's several of them, so I don't know what's what, but uh, why they would use scotch locks, especially back somewhere like that. But that's how it goes with RVs. So we'll uh, keep on the investigation and see what I find out and let you know what I'm going to do. So we've got the AC side disconnected from the uh, breaker panel. We've got the DC side disconnected from the fuse panel. And uh, out she comes. She's a big old box and it weighs quite a bit. I see they had this wire connected to the terminal up here on the panel. Not sure what the deal on that one is. Doesn't really seem to. Let's connect to something on the circuit board. Not sure because they already have power and ground there. Hmm, we'll have to figure that out. So I figured out the two white wires. I'm sure some people know, but I just learned. It's good to learn new things all the time. So we have filtered power and unfiltered power coming out of the converter. Only these three um, fuses are supplied from the battery. And depending on the position of this relay and um, the rest are powered like from the connection from the battery. And then these fuses over here are powered from this connection that the other white wire from the converter goes. So if the converter puts out only like a certain amount of filtered power to run things, and um, depending on the position of this relay, whether you're plugged into shore power or not, it changes w where your power is directed. And um, yeah, so we don't have to worry about that. Where our converters are is gonna be basically a charger charging the batteries. And then we're just gonna have battery power coming up to here. So I think what we're gonna have since we have a 45 amp charger is the unless I'm gonna run like two gauge probably all the way back to the charger from here or all the way back to the batteries from here, I'd be better off not to do that and put the charger back by the batteries. Then I can uh, I can just hook the charger right to the batteries so we don't have to run 45 amps of DC that far. And um, I can run AC back there to plug the uh, to plug the converter or charger in. And uh, that'll be a lot easier than buying a bunch of uh, heavy gauge wire and running it back there. Then I just have to make sure I have a good power feed from the batteries up to this panel and the fridge. So um, I'm going to look into that still. So being that's filtered 12 volt feed to the fuses, this is unfiltered. Or do I have that backwards? I think I have that backwards. Anyway, regardless, um, this was battery power. This was coming off of the inverter, depending on uh, the uh, plug-in status of that relay. So what I've done, all my fuses now are powered by the power coming in from the battery. This is the power coming from my battery bank now. And I've just jumpered it with the piece of white wire from the old converter. I put some black heat shrink on it so we know they're both black power wires. And um, so everything's powered now by power coming in from the batteries since I don't have the converter powering anything anymore. So we just have power and ground coming from the battery bank. This uh, 10 gauge wire runs all the way back to the battery bank. It also goes up to the fridge, which I think powered the fridge originally. I am not gonna use that. I think I'll just use those 10 gauge, 10 gauge wires to feed the uh, fuse panel. And um, because I'm really, I'm not 100% sure. Oh, let me get up here. I'm not 100% sure about the uh, connections in there, whether that's, you know, I have that same 10 gauge coming up in the fridge cabinet. Is it connected with, with scotch locks in there? I would think so. Um, uh, so, you know, just, I don't know for sure. So I want a good power feed to the fridge. 
The uh, power that was sent up there for the inverter is 12 gauge wire. Um, it's a solid run of red and black wire right from the battery, or sorry, did I say the inverter? The power that was sent up there for the solar system that was added after, um, that is a 12 gauge wire, which the fridge, the factory cord that comes with it is, is a 12 gauge wire. Um, that's what it's requesting. It's only, it's only 4.3 amps, the max draw of the fridge. So, um, the 12 gauge wire is sufficient. It's a short run. It's maybe eight feet or something, eight, nine feet. So, um, I'm going to not use this red or this black and white wire that I think may be connected with scotch locks. I'm going to use this wire which I can see is this direct run that was added afterwards that goes right to the batteries right to the fuse panel at the batteries so it's a separate fuse panel so um, I'm going to use that for the fridge connect the factory cord that plugs into the fridge with those then I know they're good the wire that was coiled under the stove which that wire is a 10 gauge wire coiled all up in there so you would just assume that there would be a 10 gauge wire going into the fuse panel that would be that wire or the breaker panel. There is no 10 gauge wire coming from that direction. They're all 14 gauge wires. So my intention was to uncoil that, run that over to my inverter, and then that would be my 120 volt feed to my panel for my inverter. Now I'm kind of wondering where it goes and does it connect to something on the way? Um, as far as from there where it was, underneath this cabinet I can see it. It goes under the fridge cabinet. I can still see it going under there. There, I don't see it. I see all the wires that come in. None of them are a 10 gauge wire. So um, going up to the outlet in here, it's all 14 gauge wire. So what's going on? I don't know. But where I'm at right now, I'm cutting a hole in here to see what's going on. Oh, and I see it going down. What's going on? Does it continue on? Why did I not see it here? Yeah, so I've uh, been feeling around under here. That wire seems to run from the breaker panel underneath the dinette, comes back here to this electrical area. There's only one of these uh, 10 gauge wires going to this power box, which this big power cord, it's just in my way. I'm taking it out. Um, we don't do any big power stuff. I'm going to have solar we can run off of, and if we do plug in, which we rarely ever do, but if we do, it'll be to uh, just charge the batteries. Can you see in there? Underneath that little cutout where this wire runs, I feel another wire in there, and it's coiled up. So I'm going to try and contortionist my hand and get a hold of it and try and pull it through because it looks like this one just turns and goes under the dinette. I tried getting my uh, fingers under there and I couldn't really pull it through. I tried with some different hooks like this to hook it and pull it through. I couldn't, but let's go on the inside. I finally managed to snake my arm down in there and get a hold of it. You can see the little bit of light where that cutout is under there. I did get a hold of it and was able to pull it out. And look at that, the other end of the wire. So that runs down underneath the dinette, past the electrical box, under the fridge, down this side, it was coiled up under the stove. And then I extended it out. And it's sitting here. My inverter and batteries are going in this box. So that wire runs all the way around to the electrical side. So I need to decide where my inlet is going to be um, and where I'm going to put my um, auto switching. Uh, relay. I have a 30 amp auto switching relay. 
which will switch between shore power and inverter power. Which, since that wire runs all the way over there, I could put it over there. It's kind of limited for space though. I don't think there's enough room. So, I just didn't want to cut that big wire off that went across there without knowing where it went and what it did and what it was hooked to. So I'm going to double check. I'm going to do a continuity test from one side to the other to make sure that is the other end of that wire. If it is, I'm probably going to cut it off. That's going to be in my inverter feed to the panel. And I'll put my, um, my auto switching relay underneath where the converter used to be. That's the plan right now. So we'll stay tuned. We'll see how that plays out. So it looks like a good spot for our uh, auto switching relay transfer switch is where the converter was. This is the one I have. It's pretty big. Go power 30 amp transfer switch. So my feed comes in from my shore power door over there. I'll be when I'm plugged into shore power that'll go in through there and then I'll use that big 10 gauge wire, cut it off since I don't need it going back there, it doesn't hook to anything. Run it into here, that'll be my inverter feed and then it'll go from here to my panel. So when I'm on inverter, it'll switch to inverter side and feed the panel. When I'm on shore power, it'll switch to shore power side and feed the panel. Okay, so the uh, electrical panel is back in place. The uh, automatic transfer switch is mounted underneath where the uh, converter originally was. We have the uh, big 10 gauge wire coming in from the power feed on this side hooked into the transfer switch. We have the power feed that's going to come from the inverter on this side hooked into the transfer switch and then that transfer switch feeds the main breaker in there on the breaker panel. So we're done in there. Our 12 volts all fixed up so all of our uh, 12 volt circuits are coming from the battery. We have, um, I think, a decent battery feed from the battery compartment. I just need to um, connect the other end of the inverter feed wire to the inverter once I get all the solar stuff in. And right now I'm going to put a connector on the uh, shore power feed because I'm eliminating that big wire. We don't need that big 30 amp inlet. Um, so I'm going to go down to a 15 amp outlet. I found myself a plug-in in my electrical box. So we'll get that installed now. So this was just a junction box where the big black 30 amp cable went in the top. And this uh, 10 gauge wire that came, come, came from the uh, main breaker panel, which is now going to the um, transfer relay, wired together and then it had a faceplate on it. I am actually going to put this connector on it so I can plug a regular extension cord into it. I don't like where it is though. I think I'm going to unmount it from there. Is unmount a word? Maybe. And maybe put it over on this side so that I can get a straight shot at plugging it in. Just a little less awkward, I think. Right, I put this uh, plug-in type thing, the female plug-in, on uh, the box and move the box to the back of this compartment here instead of over on the side. So this is kind of different than what you normally see, but you can see there's a, you can see, there's a female connector in there, which normally you wouldn't have on electrical because that, if you touched it, you would get shocked. But this is hooked to the, um, to the auto transfer switch. So the only way to energize this is to put power onto this plug. So I have a plug in here. I will plug it in which is an extension cord coming from the shore power. So now we should be live through the transfer switch, switch to our panel. Go inside and see if we have power. There we go. So next step on the electrical install, 120 volt electrical. Um, I had to get a little bit more um, 14-2 wire. I was out of it. So I got one more thing to do. 
I need to run, I'm going to run a circuit from the breaker panel around to where the uh, batteries are going to be because I'm going to put the new charger there by the battery so I don't need to run the, the uh, 45 amps of DC very far. So I'll run the 120 volt over to there to power up the inverter. And uh, so we'll run that around from the panel underneath the fridge through that opening I cut access into when I put the drawer. Um, underneath this cupboard, which I have the panel in there that I can live, well, I have lifted up right now so you can see all the wiring in there. Then it goes under the stove. I have to get around this um, uh, clo enclosure for the propane tanks from the outside so I can get up behind the stove over that enclosure like I did with the uh, with the wire that is uh, is the feed from the inverter and then um, into this cupboard where I've just had this wire sitting so far but I'm gonna have to get into this area because this is where I'm putting the batteries and the inverter. Um, Alright, so we'll leave a little extra wire there. Better have a little extra than not enough. Put a little bend in it. So, uh, down here with me on the floor. I got that uh, circuit for the charger wired in here. Um, ground to the ground bus bar and um, neutral down with the neutrals into the neutral bus bar. I ran the hot over with the breakers here and um, just put a MAR connector on it for now. I'm not gonna hook it up just yet and um, I'll get the wire run around neatly tied up with the other wires and uh, over to the other side near where the charger is going to be and um, just one note of mention um, well a couple notes of mention I guess I'm not an electrician so don't do what I do maybe some of it I don't know but um, I'm not I'm not a pro in the electrical field or any by any means I've done some wiring but uh, I think I have a good grasp of it but um, always just double check anything you're doing and uh, make it as neat as possible and if you're ever in the fuse panel or breaker panel double check the tightness make sure your power is off before you get digging into everything but double check the tightness of all your connectors all your screws that pinch down on the grounds and the neutrals and on your breakers because i guarantee you some of them are loose if it hasn't been done in a long time this panel had a lot of loose ones like some really loose so it's uh it's fire hazard you know you can get create a lot of heat in a loose connection so it's always a good thing to check on your uh, on your panel after a few years to make sure everything's tight just going to get this wire tidied up on its run uh, to the back of the rv the uh, most of the wires are bundled together and held in with like p clamps like this um, i am not going to open up all those p clamps i'm just going to run it along in similar route and attach it uh, with some zip ties along the way I want to get these wires back here zip tied to the water line just to hold them tight away from the stove. Um, my arm doesn't really fit through here though my elbow is the limiting factor so let's see. I may get my arm in there and not back out again. <laughs> I think if I wiggle it just right oh, I can get it in there. So that's good. But we'll see if I can get it back out again. Now, the moment of truth. Do I get my arm back? <laughs> okay, so I have my two wires. This will be the feed from the inverter to the panel. And this is the power circuit to power up my charger. Um, I am going to, I think, put a junction box in here. Um, I'm not really too keen on having this, you know, hard wire, solid copper wire going into my uh, inverter box and connecting to my inverter. Technically, it's not advised to use hard wires in an RV, even though this is all wired with that on the 120 volt side. Vibration can break them over time, I guess, but um, they're not that as neat to run as a flexible wire either so I think I might go from junction box here go into the inverter with a with a you know a, a fine strand copper flexible wire and um, 
then I I think my charger comes with a with a cord with a plug-in on it so um, I may just run that out here put an outlet and plug it in um, we'll see when I get to that and um, but for now I'm just gonna cut this wire off and leave it in the cabinet here I'll leave a little extra and then I can deal with it I'm working in the kitchen cupboard here I have a junction box I'm putting in so this is the 12 gauge wire feed from and coming from the inverter. That's going to connect directly with some mark connectors to this 12 gauge wire that goes all the way to just under the breaker panel at the um, auto transfer switch. So we can transfer between shore power and inverter power automatically. So those will just connect together using this as a junction box. This 14 gauge wire uh, is another circuit coming from the breaker panel that is just a power feed all on its own it's going to hook to this um, outlet and uh, we'll have a faceplate to put on there and that's where the inverter will plug in the wire is down here so there's a plug for that if you can see and uh, that's just going to plug into that outlet I'm going to mount this box once I get it all connected together on the wall back here, I've uh, screwed it to a piece of uh, three quarter inch plywood, just a scrap piece of ply, because there, I'm not really sure what there is to screw into in that wall other than just this paneling. I, I really have no way to tell what's behind it. I'm sure there's supports here and there, but um, this is my easy way to, uh, my screws won't really have to catch anything. I'll put a little bit of PL on the back of this and screw it to the to the um, paneling and then uh, it'll stick there and it'll be nice and secure. Have the new circuit installed or the new outlet box installed back there in, in the back of the kitchen cabinet. So that is a junction box for the inverter feed that powers uh, up our breaker panel through the um, tra auto transfer switch. And then uh, there's a separate 15 amp circuit that goes to that outlet that um, comes from a shore power connection to power up our charger to charge the battery bank, which is plugged into that outlet. So everything's wired in now. <clears throat> as far as uh, 120 wiring in here, I did find one little mistake I made that I'll need to correct which is where my uh, battery charger powers from because I don't want it to be activated when um, I'm running on solar power, you know, running off the batteries, which I have that charger circuit just on my regular breaker panel. So when I'm on shore power, my um, transfer switch transfers to shore power and that's priority. So if shore power is ever plugged in, it's running on shore power which my outlet that runs my charger should be only hooked to that circuit. I have it on the regular breaker panel right now. So then when I'm not on shore power and it switches to the input from the inverter, it still powers the charger, which then you're just creating a loop. I'm charging the batteries with battery power. So that's silly. I never even thought of that. So I'll have to change that. I'm gonna have to take the feed out of the breaker panel and move it into the uh, the transfer switch box so then when i'm on shore power it'll power that circuit when i'm not on shore power it doesn't power that circuit so right now i'm running on shore power i have this uh, heat gun just sitting on low here drawing about 800 watts which is working fine we'll go outside here and uh, we'll show you the inverter box but this is a totally different video this install of the batteries and the inverter and the charger. Uh, check out the video on that. That's going to be a separate video in this three-part electrical series. But um, so we're running on shore power right now. You can see there's no um, output. The inverter's actually turned on, but it's got no draw, zero watts. And um, right, you can see that. Nothing on the load bar, zero watts and uh, we're charging the batteries which i haven't uh so it says flashing charging 14 volts 
which is kind of odd because our inverter says 13.6, 38 amp, 38.6 amps. So we're putting 38.6 amps into the batteries right now. Um, I haven't configured my uh, shunt for my remote battery monitor yet um, to see, you know, in, out and all that stuff. But um, that's going to be in the other video too, going over all that stuff. But for right now, we're drawing zero on the inverter. The inverter's turned on. We'll go kill the shore power. We're just plugged in over here. You can hear the charger turned off. Our heater's still on, that heat gun. See, now we have an 800 watt load. So it's switched over to the inverter power, showing a little bit of load on the load bar. We're still running the charger though, I have to fix that so it doesn't run when it's on inverter. And uh, yeah, so we got 140 watt load, 120 watt load right now. I guess that's all that heat gun's taking. It cycles uh, on temperature, so it's just blowing the fan right now. But you can hear it running. So we're running off inverter. And uh, yeah, so transfer switch, switch is working properly. It's not to show you anything about the uh, inverter. As I say, that's a totally different video and we went over all that in detail. I'll plug us back into shore power. The auto transfer switch will do its thing. And that heat gun just keeps on running. It takes a second, it seems. We're still drawing 140 watts with that heat gun. You can, I don't know if you can hear it running. And there's the click. So we're back to shore power. And that heat gun never missed the beat. It just kept on running. So it was running on the inverter, transfer switch transferred over. Now it's running on shore power, didn't miss a beat. So uh, yeah, our electricals pretty much come to a wrap now. I'll just show you guys what I'm gonna do in the panel to uh, fix that uh, charger problem. And then uh, I think we're good for 120 volt wiring in this baby. All right, so I fixed my brain fart and I removed the circuit to the uh, that I put in to go to the battery charger out of the breaker panel. So it's not on when it's on both shore power or inverter. I've moved that wire into the uh, this go power 30 amp transfer switch. And now it's only connected to the shore power side of the transfer switch. So when we're plugged into shore power, the um, charger will be powered up and then when it transfers over to inverter power the uh, the charger will not be activated so that we're not going to be in that loop of charging the batteries with battery power so today we're going to update some lights in this truck camper these uh, 12 volt lights that are in here, there's quite a few of these, mostly doubles. I think there's a couple singles, but there's actually a lot of lights for a small truck camper. But uh, some of them have LED bulbs, but they're still really not very bright. Actually, I think the regular incandescent bulbs are brighter than the LED ones. But uh, we're gonna put LED, modern LEDs, which um, have these LED panels, and they also have dimmers which is kind of cool. So we got a box of those. We got four of those. There are 120 LED lights and uh, they look pretty similar dimensions to the uh, lights that are in there. So uh, let's get a couple changed out and see how they look. So we'll put the red to the black. And the white to the white. So we have dimming function. And then pushing the button also gives us these different Kelvins of light, I guess you'd call it. So you get three different options. And I think you hold it down for a sec to shut it off. Yeah, just like that. 
Okay, we'll get that screwed up there. We'll put the covers on it. Pretty nice. We'll compare that to that, one of the old lights. So here we have the incandescent bulb, and that's an upgraded LED bulb, which is definitely more power efficient, but um, you can see the incandescence brighter. But then if you look at this, way better. We're on to the last task of the interior wiring. I have some 12 volt outlets to put in. And um, I would like to put one on each side up at the head of the bed there. So we can charge our phones and so on. These are uh, USB and USB-C. So we'll mount one of those up there. I'm hoping to get power off of these lights that we took down that we're going to put back up now with the wallpapers on. Um, so we have power at each side there. They, it, it's a, uh, a closed cavity in that panel. You can't see the wires from the inside. And um, I assume they go up into the ceiling maybe. That panel isn't really removable in there, so. All right, the first lamp is back in place. The switch is on the bottom of these, so it's back working again. And we have our little USB, USB-C outlet uh, mounted there. I drilled that with a one in one eighth spade bit, which drilled pretty good. It's nice thick plywood there. So I came through the inner wall here, tucked it down along the side, used some little uh, P clamps, the small P clamps, and, um, and then I did one zip tie to the to the back of the uh, outlet so the wire doesn't get snagged when we're putting whatever in and out of here. All right, so we have a nice little blue glowing USB outlet there and a nice little blue glowing USB outlet there and two lights. Now onto this. I just hook this thing and pull it back and what's there? No 12 volt. Damn it. Just 120. So we have to pull the bottom off, run from this light over to there and then we'll have power. Hook into these. We got battery power. Oh, nuts. So we got a whole separate circuit here to run our USB plug there, which is awesome because at these light circuits you do, it's pretty small wire and you get voltage drop, especially when all the lights are on and everything. So we lose a little bit of charging juice. In that case, I'm gonna put another one down here and uh, we can have USB charging there too. And I'll wire up two of these suckers. That's awesome. I have all the uh, wires connected in here now in this upper cabinet over the dinette. Um, with that other circuit I found, I just kind of went to town and um, I wired in a USB connector under the dinette there with a spacer so it would clear the uh, shelf bottom. And um, then I put another one on the end here beside the 120 volt outlet. And while I was at it, I thought, well, we might want a ventilation fan up here. I should probably have it so we can maybe mount it where we find most um, effective instead of just mounting it there. And also make it so we can change it out if we wanted a different fan or if this one fails. So 
I dug through my connectors, found an old cigarette lighter style connector. We can just plug into there and have some fan blowing on us when we're in bed. And maybe, you know, like I say, decide what we want, how what works best. And um, that gives us a few different options and another plug-in up there if we want to use it for something else. So we got lots of 12 volt power up here now. So that concludes the first episode of our three-part electrical series. We've now completed what we needed to get done to set the groundwork to do all the electrical work we need to do to this truck camper. We have the circuits run that we need for our episode on installing the batteries and inverter. And we have what we need so we can get our large solar array installed on the roof and all the components required to put that in. Also, we have our upgraded lighting and electrical outlets that we need to live day in and day out in this truck camper. Thanks for following along. Be sure to check out our episodes on the solar install and the battery and inverter install on our three-part electrical series. Thanks for watching.